Hey warriors, it's Victoria just coming to you tonight in my cozy jammies. I just thought it might be fun. You know, I know for years I basically lived in my pajamas and robes. And anyway, it's kind of late here in the evening and I thought I would do a couple of videos and just cozy up with you. So anyway, I wanted to share uh, about these brain retraining cards that I got that are so cool. And look at the stack. Isn't that awesome? And they are from howimhealing.com. So if you decide you'd like to get some of these, you can go to their website. It's a, I'm sure it's a woman who's doing this, but it's very cool. She's taken some different um, ideas from brain retraining programs and she doesn't really represent any specific one. And she just made up some cards that, you know, are little signals and reminders. So what I thought would be fun tonight is just kind of go through just a few of them and just, you know, share a few thoughts about them because they're just very good. So this first one is, nope, not going there. And that's in quotes. So it's something you'd say, this is a good phrase to tell your limbic system right when you become aware of the negative thought or sensation. And that's a really um, fun thing. I had this uh, thought come up the other day and I had just been looking over these cards and it was just a great way to do it rather than doing a full process on the thought, just nope, not going there. And you're just retraining your mind and going in a different direction. The next one is uh, take in the good. This says, take time to savor positive feelings while eating a delicious meal, putting on a soft sweatshirt, feeling the breeze, smelling an essential oil, etc." So isn't that cool? You know, in my NLP studies, we learn a lot about states and about submodalities of states. And it makes me think of this because your submodalities are like all the senses, your sight, hearing, tasting, feeling, um, what else, uh, even your smell. So any kind of sense, it's, it's really diving into that. And it actually has added so much pleasure to my life because now I'm so much more aware of those things. And what when you connect with those sensations and those senses, it really brings you into the present moment. So that's a good one. Take in the good. Look for evidence to support the positive changes you are making. What is going well right now? Isn't that powerful? I know all through my recovery, I learned this early on is that I had to be my own cheerleader. And I began a practice at night where I would do a three win habit. So every night, and I still do it, is before I go to sleep, I rehearse three wins of the day. And you know, what's really fun is when I was debilitated with CFS, it was things like, I took a shower today. And that wasn't every day. That was once a week, maybe a couple times a week. But that was a win. Uh, let's see, maybe I had a conversation with my kids for just a few minutes. And that was a win. And um, boy, if I washed my face in the morning or when I got up, that would be a really big win too. And it's amazing to see over the years, the progress and the wins. Then it became, I did a three minute walk. Uh, you know, I actually went into the living room for dinner with my family rather than taking dinner in bed. And now what's really fun is I'll have so many wins of the day. I'll have to like 10 and I'm like, okay, that's enough. I've done 10. Uh, they're just, because it's, it's like you begin to, you develop this habit where you see the good. And now it's like, oh, I went to the gym and worked out and I did dinner with the family, you know, but dad came over and we had watched in, you know, had dinner in a movie or, um, I got together with a friend or I went out for coffee with my daughter. I mean, there's so many wonderful things that, you know, you build up to. So anyway, that this is just huge. Count your wins, warriors. It's huge. This is fun. Have fun with an activity that you'd like to do when you were a child. Rollerblading, drawing with chalk outside, coloring, anything light and fun. And, you know, I've been wanting to go swing ever since I read this card. I thought I used to love swinging when I was a kid on a swing set. And then I also liked lying in the grass and just staring up at the sky and watching the clouds. Um, 
so I haven't gotten out to do those things yet, but what was fun is the other night, my husband and I, we had these uh, birthday balloons that were left over from his birthday. And we thought, well, it's time to toss them, but we ended up pulling them down from the ceiling and cutting them open. And uh, he started breathing it in and singing a song and it was absolutely hysterical. And I used to love that as a kid doing the helium. So I did it and we just, we had a lot of fun. And then we sent videos to our kids of it. So <laughs> probably thought we were crazy, but that's what we did. Got to add some fun into your life. Okay. And whatever way you can pay attention to how much negativity you are entertaining and verbalizing. Remember to ask yourself throughout the day, what thoughts am I thinking right now? What emotions am I feeling? Are they health affirming? That's really good for building awareness. I know when I did Mickle therapy, uh, my Claire would say, every time you take a drink of water, you know, notice what have I been thinking about? You know, how am I feeling about what I've been doing? So those are good little um, ways that you can, or when you go to the bathroom or whatever, to, to put a note so that you ask yourself some of those questions. If you're having a limbic system resistance, reassure your limbic system. Hey, this is good for you. We're having fun. And you know, this is really important in the DNRS program. I know Annie Hopper talks about talking to your limbic system like it's a little child because it's in that fight or flight mode and you want to calm it down. And so this is a great way to do it. And, uh, you know, with lockdown, I hadn't been out a whole bunch. And the other day we went to dinner and we went to a movie, uh, my dad, my daughter, my, my husband, we went to a movie and we went to dinner afterwards. And for a moment there was like, oh, wow, is this okay? <laughs> It's like, okay, let me see some, this is good. So if you're like not used to socializing or getting out, this is really important because um, meeting, this is meeting your emotional needs by socializing with people. And though that can be very challenging and you got to fit it within your training zone, as Annie Hopper talks about keeping it, it's like what I think of also as baseline. So you don't want to go out and do five hours, you know, with someone, if you're not even used to having a, you know, hour conversation, you're going to start small and build up. Um, but it's great to remind yourself, I'm meeting my emotional needs by doing this. And so it's fun, limbic system. You can calm, calm down. She calls it Lindy. So that's really fun. Chill out, Lindy. Okay, couple more. Our thoughts create our lives and every words indicate what we are thinking. And every moment you are creating your life with the thoughts you give primary attention to. And this is from the book, A Complaint-Free World. So that's very powerful. And I agree with that. You know, the scripture says, as a man thinks, so is he. So it's very interesting how our thoughts actually create our lives. And that's why I think with uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, it is a real illness classified as neurological illness by World Health Org. But our thoughts, we can get into these cycles with our limbic system so elevated, our thoughts go in these cycles and we tend to think of the most horrible things that can happen or we, you know, we catastrophize things, see it down the road. What will my life be like in 10 years if I don't get my life back? And we, we need to learn how to stop those thoughts and gently bring them back. So just being aware of it and creating what is in your mind's eye, because that's going to be creating the life that you will be living. Okay, if you're having a setback, don't believe your limbic system if it tells you you're not getting better. There is an ebb and flow to the recovery process. Healing is not linear. There will be times when you notice improvement and times when you feel like you've taken a step backward. This is all normal. Keep practicing and trust the process. I love that. You know, one thing that really encouraged me early on is with the Optimum Health Clinic where they make the analogy of, um, the rockets to the moon were not on course, like 90% of the time they were off course, but they kept course correcting and they eventually made it to the moon. And, you know, this is so true in recovery. I, you know, my recovery was built of setbacks and comebacks. And so remember, every time you have had a setback, you've had a comeback. And so remember that and, and, and let it encourage you that it is not a straight line. It's a kind of a zigzaggy line, but you're going to make it. Okay. The next, the thing is, that's kind of cool. What she does is she, um, 
the, let's see what the back of that. So some of these, one was called redirect your thoughts. See, she writes on the back of these, what they are. And then mood elevation, which was doing what you were on your child, recovery tools and tips. And when you have a symptom. So this is the next one is um, positive word of the day. And I just love to look at these. It's amazing what looking at a word, and this is neuro-linguistic programming. We're using our language to program our brain and our bodies. So right now I'm working more on focus and productivity. And so these were really good for me, focused, clear-minded. This was very powerful for me in recovery, resilient, building resilience, carefree, adventurous, spontaneous. I love spontaneity. And that's been one thing in my work in recovery is really allowing myself permission to be spontaneous because that's that inner child in me really wants that and when we do that we bring that fun and even if it's something you know I don't just something as easy as like maybe well I don't know depending on what level of recovery you are but just having a little tea party in the living room you know or having someone bring you tea in bed and just having a little chat that could be something spontaneous playful. You know, a lot of times when you're sick, obviously with a chronic illness and when you're debilitated, you don't feel like being playful, right? But as you progress in recovery and the symptoms begin to fall away, it's so important, you know, even when you're still struggling to insert playfulness, because that just lightens everything. And our limbic system loves that. It puts it at ease. It causes those good chemicals to course through our bodies. And then let's see, these two are re redirect your thoughts. I am resilient. Say that five times today. I am resilient. And this has been great because I've noticed now that I have the hours of the day to do things, uh, I get like, oh my gosh, there's so much I want to do. What do I do? <laughs> I get confused and overwhelmed. And it's like, this is great. I know what to do and I do it. And it's amazing how just that has helped me, you know, be more decisive and just take direction for my life. So anyway, so that's it, Warriors. If you want to check this out, I'll put in the titles the name of where the, the website that you can check her out. I think they were like $30, but you know what? It's well worth it just to have this. You can set them as reminders around your house. And uh Anyway, I hope you're doing well. And uh, remember, life's not over. It's starting again. And I speak life, health, and wholeness over you.